Now I'll introduce you to the Sky Replacement Command, which allows you to replace one sky with another. Now, first thing I need to do is go over here to the Layers panel and click on the background item, and that's because this command only works with either pixel-based images or smart objects. Next, what you want to do is go up to the Edit menu and choose this command right here, Sky Replacement, which is going to bring up this dialog box. Now, you want to make sure the preview checkbox is turned on so you can see what you're doing. And notice right away, Photoshop goes ahead and replaces the old blue sky with this more dramatic sunset. Now, if you want to switch to a different sky, then you just click on this big sky thumbnail right here and notice, at least as things stand now, that we have nearly 30 different skies to choose from. So I could switch from this guy to another one, in this case by Russell Brown, and we'll end up with these joyful children set against this dangerous stormy sky. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up a little. We've got this sunset, incidentally by Julianne Cost. However, the one I'm looking for is this guy right here. And notice that they're organized into groups. And so if you like, you can twirl a group closed or twirl it back open. You can also change the size of these thumbnails by dragging along this slider bar down here at the bottom of the screen. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and accept that guy by clicking okay. And I want you to see what Photoshop has done. Notice it's added a total of three layers inside this sky replacement group. And so the bottommost layer is a curves layer that settles down the red and green channels in this case. It's pretty subtle, so when I turn it off, we're not seeing much of a difference. This guy on top is the actual sky. So if I were to turn it off, you can see the original sky subject to a little bit of cloudiness right here with this very blurry mask. And so the idea behind this layer is that it helps to match the foreground subjects to their new background. So notice if I turn the sky back on and then I turn that kind of hazy layer off, we have a lot more contrast between the kids and the sky. And so it's up to you which layers you decide to use. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that haze layer on and I'll click on that layer in order to select it. Notice that its opacity is set to 65%. I'm gonna take it down to 33% just by tapping the three key a couple of times in a row. And that's how you use the sky replacement command as well as customize its results here inside Photoshop 2021. Now we'll take a look at a couple of options that allow you to control the degree to which the sky is allowed to encroach into the foreground image. And these options go by the names shift edge and fade edge. And so here we have another photograph from the Dreamstime image library featuring a more complex sky with a wider variety of colors and a lot of blues inside the foreground image. Notice that the photographic image is selected here inside the layers panel, at which point I'll go up to the edit menu and choose sky replacement. And as you can see, Photoshop goes ahead and automatically selects my last applied sky. All right, so here are the values we're talking about. Shift edge allows you to shift the sky inward if you apply a positive value. So notice that we're losing a lot of the foreground image. Whereas if I were to take this value back down to zero, you can see that we already have a little bit too much sky. I'll go ahead and press Control Plus or Command Plus on the Mac to zoom in. And you can see how this red cloud is intruding upon this woman's knee. And so what I want to do is shift the sky outward and you make that happen by applying a negative shift edge value. And the reason it's negative is because it's tightening the mask around the sky. Now we have this fade edge value, which by default is set to 100%, which means that we have an awful lot of softening or feathering if you prefer. If you want less of that, then decrease that value. And you can take it all the way down to zero if you like, at which point you're gonna get some pretty choppy edges inside your mask. And so I came up with the following values. I decided to take the shift edge value down to negative 40, and I went with a fade edge value of 33. And I also decided to switch out the sky. I'm gonna twirl close blue skies right there, and I'm gonna go with this third sky in the sunsets group, your skies may end up being different than mine, at which point I'll go ahead and click OK in order to accept that effect. And then I'll press Control-0 or Command-0 on the Mac to center my zoom. And so notice once again, we have those three layers inside of a group. 
if I were to turn the group off, you can see this is the before version of the sky, and this is the after version. And notice that Photoshop has done a really good job, I think, of blending these new clouds with the old ones down here in the bottom left corner of the image. All right, now very briefly, I want you to see the difference between these masks. And so here's the mask if we were to apply the default values, shift edge zero, fade edge 100. This is the mask as it appears with our new values of shift edge negative 40 and fade edge of 33. And then if I were to go with some more extreme values, such as a shift edge value of negative 70 and a fade edge of zero, we get some very crunchy results here inside the mask which is why I split the difference with these values right here. And that's how you take advantage of those shift edge and fade edge values when you're blending a new sky with an existing foreground image here inside Photoshop 2021. All right, now I'll show you how to paint with the new sky brush, which not only sounds cool, but it works quite nicely as well. And so I want to bring your attention to the transition right here between this sunset sky and this woman's thigh. And notice that we have a little bit of leaking going on. And so we might want to paint away the sky along the edge of the leg. And we might want to paint in some more sky along the front side of the gymnast body. And so if you want to make those kinds of changes, you can either edit the layer mask here inside the layers panel, or you can just start over again which is what I'm gonna do. So I'll switch over to the original photograph, then I'll go up to the edit menu, choose sky replacement. Once again, Photoshop's gonna go with that last applied sky. This time, I'm not gonna worry about the shift and fade edge values. Instead, I'm gonna select the sky brush. And the great thing about this brush is it allows you to paint in more sky or paint away sky. So in other words, you can make selective modifications. All right, so by default, we've got a little plus sign inside the cursor. I want to make my brush larger, so I'll press the right bracket key a few times. This is a very standard technique inside Photoshop. And then I'll brush like so in order to paint in some additional sky. Now, it's going to be a little subtle, and that has a lot to do with these settings up here in the options bar. And so notice the mode is set to overlay. And as many of you may know, overlay is a standard masking function inside Photoshop. But notice that the opacity value is set to 50%. That is rarely useful in my opinion. You generally want to crank this guy up to 100%. And then notice if I were to click on this little brush icon, I'll see a size value, so you can modify the size here as well. I'll also see a hardness value that by default, at least for me, is set to 50%. I'm gonna go ahead and take that guy down to 0% so that we have very soft edges. And then I'll go ahead and paint in some more. And you can see now I am making less subtle modifications and bringing back more of that new sky. Now, if you want to paint away the sky, then you can either switch to this minus sign up here in the options bar, or you can just press and hold the alt key, at which point that little plus inside the brush will change to a minus. So that's a function of pressing the alt key here on the PC or the option key on the Mac, and then brush in order to bring back some of the foreground like so. Now, if you're bringing back too much of the foreground, notice we have a bit of a harsh edge right there, then what you might want to do is change the mode from overlay to soft light, and that will give you a more subtle effect. And now notice if I paint that sky back in, I get a softer transition, at which point I'll go ahead and click OK to accept that change. And that's how you work with the new sky brush when applying the sky replacement command here inside Photoshop 2021. Now we'll take a look at a group of options known as the sky adjustments, which allow you to change the brightness, color balance, and size of the sky. All right, so here we are looking at the original photograph. I'll go up to the edit menu and choose sky replacement in order to bring up that sky replacement dialog box complete with that last applied sky. And I'll go ahead and take the shift edge value down to negative 40. And this time around, I'll set the fade edge value to 50, let's say. And now notice this group of options right here, sky adjustments. You could twirl them closed if you like, or reveal those options like so. 
And every one of these settings affects the sky itself. So notice if I were to crank the brightness value up, I will make the sky brighter. Looks pretty cheesy in the case of this image, but what's happening is that Photoshop is going to apply a brightness contrast adjustment layer. And so what I really want to do is reduce the brightness value. And so I'll take it down to negative 50. Then we have this fairly clunky temperature option right here. It's not nearly as capable as the temperature setting inside Camera Raw, for example. But if you like, you can make the image warmer, really more yellow. Or you can cool it down, which is really going to make it bluer. And you'll see what I mean by that in just a moment. But I'm going to crank this temperature value down to negative 77, let's say. Now I'll skip down to this flip checkbox right here, which allows you to flip the sky horizontally. You can't flip it vertically, but why would you want to? And then finally, we have the scale setting. Now, I recommend against reducing the scale value because that's going to reduce the size of the rectangular sky. And in our case, it's going to reveal a bunch of foreground details down here at the bottom. So instead, I'll crank that value up, let's say to 150%. And then finally, notice that by default, over here in the top left corner of the dialog box, we have the sky move tool. So we've got sky move. And we've got sky brush, as we saw in the previous movie, and the hand and the zoom tools. But assuming that the sky move tool is selected, then you can just drag the sky around here inside the image window. After which point, you can go ahead and click OK to accept that change. Now, here are those adjustment layers I was mentioning. Up at the top, we've got a brightness contrast layer. And so if I double click on this thumbnail, you can see that Photoshop has reduced the brightness value to negative 50, which is exactly the same value I applied inside the sky replacement dialog box. Next, we've got this color balance layer. Color balance adjustments are pretty clunky, as you may be aware. And so what we've done by taking the temperature value down to negative 77 is we've reduced the cyan red value to negative 19. So in other words, we're scooting things more towards cyan. And I've bumped the yellow blue value up to plus 38. I haven't done anything to the magenta green value, which you could argue affects the tint. And so if you like, you could warm up that sky ever so slightly by reducing this value to negative 18, which is tilting the sky away from green and toward magenta. And that's how you take advantage of the various sky adjustments, which allow you to change the brightness, color balance, and scale of your new sky.